What's up, everybody? This is your man, Tech G. And in this video, you are going to learn about the basics of computing and processing as it relates to input, um, output, processing, and storage. So that is what we are going to be talking about today, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's get on with the get on. Input. So as it relates to information technology, an input is a command or information that is made available to a computer before any type of information can be processed by a computer. The information must be input into the computer. So as you can see here, we have a couple input devices. You have a keyboard, a mouse, a microphone, a gaming controller, and one of those drawing tablets. Those are all input devices because all of those devices are designed to put to input information into the computer to get the computer to perform a certain task. Next, we're going to talk about processing. Um, information processing refers to the retrieval, modification and manipulation of digitized information from input devices or storage devices. The components involved in processing include the following. So you have things called RAM, which stands for um, random access memory. You have your CPU, which is your central processing unit. And you have a GPU, which is your graphics processing unit. All right. So here is what some typical RAM sticks look like. And like I said, RAM stands for random access memory. Is that what I said earlier? I hope I did. <laughs> Random access memory. And basically, it is computer memory that can be read and changed in any order, typically used to store working data and machine code. It is also considered short-term digital memory. And also, it is considered volatile memory, which means that you must have your device powered on in order to keep the data accessible. Because the moment you turn the power off, guess what? Anything that was stored in the RAM disappears. All right, then we have a CPU. So this is essentially the brains of a computer right here. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. Um, it is also referred to as a microprocessor or a central processor. And it handles all instructions from hardware and software to get your computer to do whatever it is that you're trying to get the machine to do. And then we have a GPU. It stands for Graphics Processing Unit. And this thing, basically, it rapidly manipulates and alters memory to accelerate the creation of images. So if you are a video gamer, this piece of... Uh, Technology is very important to you if you want your video games to flow smooth and efficiently and not be buffering or, or lagging. Then we talk about some output devices, ladies and gentlemen. So output is basically any information that is processed by and sent out from a computer or other electronic device that is considered output Typical output devices include things such as monitors, HD TVs, projectors, tablets and smartphone screens, printers, speakers and speakers. So there are a plethora of various output devices. Headphones could be considered output devices. Um, some of these devices can be considered output and input devices. So take your tablet and your smartphone screen. So if you guys look at your iPhone or your Android, the stuff that you see on your phone is considered output. It's coming through on your screen. But when you want to go into your phone and start manipulating apps and things like that, guess what? That screen can also be considered an input device by way of a feature called the digitizer. And finally, we have what is known as storage. Storage is computer, uh, computer data storage is a technology consisting of computer components and recording media that are used to retain digital data. Um, common local storage devices include USB flash drives, 
uh, internal, external hard drives, SSD drives, solid state drives, and uh, CDs, compact discs. CDs can be considered a storage device. So basically, these are things that you want to retain data on for long periods of time, as opposed to RAM, which is only there for temporary use. All right, so let's go ahead and do some check on learning. That was a pretty quick class. So let's do some of this check on learning, ladies and gentlemen. First question is, connecting a microphone to a sound card prepares it to perform which of the following activities? Would it be output? Would it be input? Would it be storage? Or would it be processing? You are connecting a microphone to a sound card to get the microphone to perform which activity? You will be getting it ready to do some input. So just like this microphone in front of my face right here, it is recording my analog voice and converting it into digital signals so that they can pump these signals into my computer and the computer can process it so that the sound comes out of your speakers so that you can hear it. Next question. You are using a video editor to add slow motion effects to a video. Which of the following tasks is being performed? Would it be output? Would it be processing? Would it be input? Or would it be storage? So you are using a video editor, editor to add slow motion effects to a video. The correct answer would be processing. You are actually performing a processing function when you are trying to add slow motion effects to a video. Now, when you look at the video and you see the slow motion effects, then you will be looking at an output. And finally, last question. Which of the following devices is an input and output device? So this device can perform both functions. Would it be a multifunction device? Would it be a scanner? Would it be a barcode reader? Or would it be a projector? The correct answer would be a multifunction device. You can think of a multifunction device as a multifunctional printer. So some printers, um, you can input uh, information into a printer by way of scanning information into it. And then it can take that scan information and print that information out on a piece of paper. So that will be considered an input output device. Uh, a scanner by itself is just an input device. You are taking information scanning it and storing it somewhere to to be used for later processing a barcode reader is another example of an input device you take a barcode you take your barcode reader it scans the barcode inputs the information and stores it or pushes it out to a processor to be used for other activities a projector is essentially information that is being beamed onto a screen that will be considered an output device Everybody understand? Cool beans. So if you want more information, you can always visit my website, Technology G, and get read up on this information so that you can successfully pass your CompTIA IT Fundamentals exam. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace.